Hello boys and girls, I'm so happy to be with you on another program, Children Empowered to Serve. We have a wonderful program for you today. Please invite all your friends to watch your program every week by going to Mission Life Grenada Facebook page, Children Empowered to Serve. And don't forget to help us share Jesus by liking and sharing this page. You know something boys and girls? Jesus is my best friend. Is Jesus your best friend? I hope he is. You know, some boys and girls say Jesus is their best friend, but they do not please Jesus in their actions. Today, we will be looking at how we should behave if Jesus is our best friend. Hi, my name is Kenisha. Welcome to our program, Children and Power to Serve. It is a program created for children by children. I know you are in for a treat today. So, without further ado, Welcome to the boys and girls and big people too, from Grenada, Karakou, and Pity Martin. Not forgetting our listeners all over the Caribbean and the world, welcome to you too. So sit back and enjoy, and don't forget to like and share. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for being my best friend. Bless all the boys and girls around the world. In Jesus' Jesus name, Amen. amen. Jesus, this is what you must do. If you want to be best friend with Jesus, you must talk to him all the time. We talk to Jesus when we pray. We must pray to Jesus in the morning when we get up, before having lunch, and at bedtime too. But that's not enough. We must talk to Jesus all the time. So if a math problem is giving you trouble, call on your best friend Jesus. If you want to know what gift you should buy for a friend, Ask your best friend Jesus for advice. The wonderful thing about Jesus is he will always listen to our prayers because he's so happy when girls and boys talk to him. To be best friends with Jesus, you must know who he is. We need to know about Jesus' birth, his life on earth, what he likes and what he dislikes and how he wants us to live. You can get these questions answered by reading the Bible, studying your Sabbath school lesson. In it, you will find wonderful stories about Jesus when he was a child and listening to people talk about the relationship about Jesus. Doing these things will help you to know more about your best friend, Jesus. Tell me the stories of Jesus I love to hear Things I would ask him to tell me If he were here Scenes by the wayside Tales of the sea Stories of Jesus tell Boys and girls, 
boys and girls. This is Auntie Annie today with you. And our story will be about a little boy named Samuel. Now, every morning before Samuel go to school, his parents would hug him, kiss him, and wish him a good day. That morning, as usual, after hugging and kissing Samuel, Daddy took him off to school. Just as they reached the school gate, his father hugged him, wished him a good day and said, remember, I will always be there for you. You don't have to worry. Samuel rushed into the school as usual. Hours after, there was a big earthquake which shook all the areas around. Everybody was concerned. People began to cry and the radio announced that there was a lot of casualties. That means there were a lot of people who got hurt. Daddy put on his coat and raced to Samuel's schoolyard. When he got there, there were other parents there already, some of who were crying. No, they were crying because they did not know what had happened to their children. Daddy looked at the, the rubble all around. There was no place, there was no doorway, there was no gate, nothing was as usual. But he looked at it and pulled out a big piece of beam. That's a big piece of board that they can find supporting the roof of the school. But now that there was no roof, the beam lay on the ground. He pulled it away and pushed it to the side. Then he picked up a big piece of rock and pushed it to the side also. And then, after a minute or so, he began digging. Taking out rocks, putting them to the side. Taking out rocks, putting them to the side. Other parents were concerned and asked, what are you doing? But he kept on digging and putting to the side without even answering. After a while, parents realized that there was no hope because you couldn't see nothing from, about, from the school. And so they asked daddy, don't you think it's better if you go home? He did not respond, but he continued digging. At last there was one parent left who looked at him and said, I don't think that makes any sense. Let us go. Daddy looked at him and replied, why don't you help me instead? But the guy just turned away and went on his way. Daddy continued digging. Daddy alone. Daddy dig late into the night and through to the next morning. Taking out blocks, put into the side. Taking out blocks, put into the side. Until his hands were all bruised and bloody. But Daddy continued digging. After a while, he moved a big piece of beam again, and then he heard faint in the distance. Papa, his ears cocked up, and he shouted, Samuel, and then that little faint voice come again, Papa. And as daddy continued to move, there was a space. He made the space big enough so that his son could come through. What do you think Samuel ran through? No, he said to daddy, let the others come first. I told them not to worry because you promised to come for me. And so that day, 14 children came out of that little space before Samuel came. He rushed into the arms of his daddy, who by now was crying because his son was alive. Daddy, he said, Daddy, I knew you would come for me. I just knew it. So I was frightened. I stood there waiting, waiting until you come. Now, boys and girls, there is somebody who always are there for us. Do you know who that is? Yes, that person is Jesus. He's always there waiting for us. All we have to do is to trust him. If we trust him, we will see whatever he has in store for us. Because remember, he promised us that he will be there. He's going 
to prepare a mansion and he would come back. And once he promised us, he will be there for us. So boys and girls, as we come to the end of this story, I want to encourage you to trust Jesus just as how Samuel trusted his daddy and waited, so too we must trust Jesus and wait for him. Let us pray to ask Jesus to help us to trust him. Dear Jesus, help us, dear God, to trust you. Help us to remember that you promise, and once you promise, you cannot fail us. This must is we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Tell me the stories of Jesus I love to hear Things I would ask him to tell me If he were here Scenes by the wayside Tales of the sea Stories of Jesus Boys and girls, I have some more things to tell you. We looked at two things we must do if Jesus is our best friend. The first one was, we must talk to Jesus all the time. And the second one, we must study the Bible to find out all we can about Jesus. I have two more secrets to, to share with you today. Greater love has no one than this. That someone lay down his life for his friend. John 15, 13. Jesus, we must tell others about him. We can tell others about him by witnessing to them, sharing a story of how good God has been to you and also preaching the gospel. Remember, Jesus said, go into the world and make disciples of all nations. Yes, for me and you to make disciples, we must tell others about Jesus starting today. Shemaiah, I understand what I have to do now. It's not too hard. With Jesus' help, I can make a change in my life. Yes, I know you can. Girls, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we bring all the boys and girls before you. We ask that you may always help them to remember that you will always be there for them. Be with each and every one of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Boys and girls, I am so sorry, but it is time to say goodbye. So please join us next Friday on Children Empowered to Serve at the same time so that we can continue learning about Jesus, our best friend.